Hi, and welcome to the NCLA Government Resources section, Help, I'm an Accidental Government Information Librarian webinar series. Rich Gauz is the Government Information Librarian for the University Libraries at the University of Central Florida and has coordinated establishing the Centers of Excellence at UCF for information from the U.S. Department of Energy, Atomic Energy Commission, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Thank you very much, Rich, for joining us today. So my name is Rich Goss. I am at University of Central Florida, and I'm going to go through a, kind of a whirlwind in terms of resources, mostly an awareness of what's out there. And the link that you're seeing on the screen for the Florida Government Information Research Tips is the only link you need to record in terms of getting back to the resources. I am in the process of adding a listing of every resource that's in the webinar to that page. So as I flip past the screen, you don't have to worry about trying to capture the URLs that are shown and the titles of certain works because that'll be there. So where do we start searching? Well, a lot of people are going to search their, their favorites in terms of, and if you know what you're looking for, I think that's one of the things a lot of times is just knowing what to look for, then you can just go to Google or Bing or Wikipedia or some other source. These are three of the sources I would go to probably next, and I'm going to go into more detail in each of them. Uh, MyFlorida is the, MyFlorida.com is the official State of Florida website. The State Library of Florida online catalog has a tremendous amount of resources, and then the shared academic uh, catalog for the state universities and state colleges in Florida would be the next place I would look. And I'll touch on a couple of key dates that have an impact when you're looking for Florida government information uh, throughout the presentation, and we'll hit each of these as we go through. Uh, before we're a state, we were territory, so you're not going to find state government information if we weren't a state, but you may be looking for Florida information from the earlier period. And really want to start out in terms of looking at the levels of government as to what type of information and information sources that you're going to look at. I will often start, if I'm looking for information about the state of Florida, i very likely going to be in federal databases and publications instead of looking at the state of Florida. The federal resources may be easier to find and may be a little bit more stable. And if I'm looking for information at the level of Florida rather than counties and cities or that type of information, then I'm probably wanting to compare that data with other states. And so the federal resource is likely to give me that data from a common source to uh, review. Also. There are a number of publications that may have been produced jointly by a federal and state agency, for example, the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Florida DOT, or the USGS and the Florida Geological Survey. Also, I'll look at federal publications because they may cite state publications. Now that I know which state publication I'm looking for, I can search on Google or other sources or in state resources for that specific publication. I'd also go to federal resource I'm looking for Florida when it was a territory because I'll be looking, for example, the territory papers of U.S., which many of you may have, uh, volumes 22 through 26 cover the Florida territory, and the Seminole Wars, which overlap the 1845 Florida becoming a state, and I may be looking at federal material there, both in terms of the War Department or in terms of Indian Affairs. If I'm looking below the state level at counties and sub-areas, be aware that there's 67 counties in Florida. And you get down to, I'd also be looking for smaller areas and probably looking at the federal resources, for, for example, the census. You also have the counties grouped into 20 metropolitan statistical areas for the urban areas. You can do sub-counties. There's 316 county subdivisions. For example, my home county of Orange County has six subdivisions of the federal resources from the census. And you can look at places, but place boundaries tend to, to change over time. A city may grow or shrink. It may cease to exist. There are 411 incorporated places in the state of Florida, plus another 509 other places that are clearly identified, but they're not incorporated. So if we go back in time, in terms of looking at material in Florida, go back all the way to the Spanish period, you had East Florida and West Florida. 
you had St. Augustine on the east side, and you had Pensacola out almost into Alabama. And that's really where you start growing from there. We started out with Escambia County and St. John's County were the two first counties in Florida representing the west part of the state and the east part of the state. As we approach, here's 1830 in terms of looking at the uh, county boundaries, this is overlaying in the dark lines what the, the county boundaries were at that time. And really, the state of Florida was the, the panhandle between there, between Pensacola and, and St. Augustine. Because you didn't have mosquito control, air conditioning, the lower part of the state wasn't really developed. In fact, you'll notice that Mosquito County was the name for the county that I currently reside in, which is now Orange County. By 1925, the county boundaries had stabilized. And so I generally use county boundaries when I'm looking for most information at the sub-state level. Um, 1920 is shown here, and the very last of the changes in county boundaries uh, took place in 1925. Now, there have been minor changes since then. If a river is the boundary between two counties, you may find that it shifted a little bit, but I'm not going to really worry about that. Um, Dade County is now Miami-Dade County. Um, at one point, like 20 years ago, there was a bill proposed to split Monroe County into the Keys, and it's two counties, the Keys and then the mainland part of the county, but nothing ever happened with that. Uh, there have been proposals over time. One of the things, my, my, I grew up in Bradenton over in Manatee County, and there was a proposal from Sarasota legislatures to change the county boundary by about 150 feet, I believe, because a subdivision had a new section that was overlapping into Manatee County. And it almost went through, but the state legislators from Manatee County suddenly realized that really what was up was that the county boundary shifting 150 feet to the north would mean that the Sarasota Bradenton Airport, which is right on the county line, all the runways and all the noise from air travel would still be in Manatee County, but the terminal building would now be entirely in Sarasota County, and all the tax revenue would go to Sarasota County from all the flights at the airport. So that didn't go anywhere either. There's also sub-areas within the state in terms of counties, a couple of different uh, regional areas within the state that are state functions, but they're not under a state agency directly in some cases. And then there are sub-areas for state agencies and then the court system. And one of the problems you'll encounter is that these Make, these are groupings of counties to make up these districts, councils, regions, but none of the agencies, as far as I can tell, uses the same division of counties. So if you're looking for two or three counties that are near each other, you may have to go to different regions to pull the data for them. For example, the Florida Regional Planning Council divides up the, the state very cleanly, and if you want to pick I'm going to go over a series of maps. If you want to take a look at the uh, area in pink, the Tampa Bay area, Polk, Hillsborough, Manatee County, and just sort of try and track how that changes as we move from area to area. So you see that the local health councils actually split that up into three different, overlapping into three different areas. In environmental protection, the water management districts, actually there's five water management districts in Florida, and these are the ones that don't conform to county boundaries. They're based on the watersheds. So you'll see the one that's highlighted in blue is the area that flows down through the Kissimmee River down into the Everglades. The Northwest Florida Water Management District up in the Panhandle is the area flowing out of Alabama and Georgia. The rivers that flow down here, uh, actually the uh, Apalachicola River that flows down into the Gulf, actually starts as the Caloosahatchee River up very near the North Carolina border. It's like all the way down around Atlanta and down to Florida. The State Department of Environmental Protection, the Water Management District, the State Department of Environmental Protection are linked fairly closely, but they have different district arrangements of those uh, county boundaries, how they get grouped. State Department of Transportation is decentralized, and they have transportation districts, and again, they're grouped differently. 
State Division of Emergency Management that deals with hurricanes and fires and all those sorts of things that we might worry about. Again, groups them differently. So here you can see all those maps sort of side by side, and you'll see that comparing them one map to another, that none of the counties are grouped quite the same on any one map. So this is just heads up if you're looking for Florida information that you may have to look in different groupings to find that, that county level data. Court system in Florida, the same thing. The five district courts that are the appellate courts in Florida, uh, each of them subdivided into circuit courts, which are also subdivided into county courts. So this is the difference from the federal system to the state of Florida system. In the federal system, the district courts are the trial courts, the smaller courts, and the circuit courts are the appellate courts. In Florida, the circuit courts are the trial courts and the county courts, and then the district courts are the appellate courts. So getting back to one of the places I would say start, the MyFlorida.com website gives you the um, really a good starting point for most people to try and locate information about Florida. I broke out the tabs. The tabs are on the top left, Visitor Florida, Floridian Business Government. Here's sort of a breakout of how those list and group information for folks. And so depending on what type of information you're looking for, they give you a good start to trying to find information. In the top corner of that My Florida that page, there's a Find an Agency tab, and that opens to this page, which is if you know that you're looking for a particular type of information, this actually is a directory of the Florida agencies. You'll see the environmental protection in the top middle of that column, and I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. This is the lower part of that page, so if you were looking, for example, the water management districts or the regional planning councils, this provides you with those links. I said I was going to go back to the Department of Environmental Protection. So here we are on the page. I've dropped down the division listing, and we're going to go to the Florida Geological Survey in just a moment. But I want to scroll down to the very bottom of their main page where they have a document resource hub where you can actually search for documents. So if you know which agency you're looking for publications from, you may find they've got a specialized tool. They actually have a couple of specialized tools at the uh, DEP for locating documents and publications for, from that agency. If we go to the Florida Geological Survey uh, page, they have a link for FGS publications. You go to that, you've got a downloadable list of the FGS publications as a PDF, which they update about once a year. There's also an online list, but I'd recommend the downloadable list because there you're going to find about 80 pages of information listing all the publications, even those that have not moved online yet, although many, almost all of them have at this point. And then the individual pages there, they give you uh, – information in terms of ordering and sometimes you'll find pricing, but they have the links to the PDFs of the actual publications uh, right there in the document. On the right page, you'll see the Open File Map Series. There's a bunch of them that don't have links. That's because there's a general link at the top of that column that will provide you all of those geological maps in one place. Going back to the My Florida page, there's a tab at the top for the 411 directory, which is the directory for the state of Florida, including the State Information Center if you're trying to find it, you can't figure out who to contact. But you'll notice on the left-hand side, you can look by agency, by county, you can actually look by employee if they're listed, uh, by the schools and the university settings. The other thing I'll point out there is the email naming standards link. I've done the drop-down for Citrus County, or for the Department of Citrus, rather. And if you found in some other format, in a bibliography or from a uh, presentation somewhere, you found the name of an individual, but you don't have their, you actually have their name, but you don't have their email address, this will show you how, for that specific agency, email addresses are constructed. So you can give that a try if you can't find them listed someplace. The second place I was identifying was the State Library of Florida. And for state publications, this is going to be the main source. If you, you're not finding it elsewhere, this is a great starting place. 
the State Library of Florida online catalog, if we click, I'm going to come back to this page several times, when we click on state publications in that, where I've got the red arrow pointing, we land on this page. And this is, we'll come back to this page again in a moment, but this will let you search the catalog and it is presetting the search requirements to limiting to the state publications collection. I did a search there for Division of Administrative Hearings Annual Report and pulled up a listing for it, including the where they've got digital copies, the electronic resource list. And this is where they've got the links to the individual digitized publications. Now this Florida Public Documents collection that the State Library maintains, you sort of have to go through the library catalog to get to the individual publications. Going back to the State Library of Florida uh, catalog page, we we'll click on the Florida Information Finder where the arrow is pointing. And this gives you a lot of ways to find information about Florida by different topic areas. I'm going to look at the A to Z index here. And this will actually, you can just work your way through a menu that will help you locate information from this A to Z list. It can be very helpful try to just sort of browse through and find, oh, that's what I was looking for. Going back to the State Library catalog page, the State Library provides a lot of services specifically for state employees. And if you're looking at the state catalog, what you have to do is you have to know what you're looking for pretty much. You can do a search it by keyword. There's number ways to search it. But if you don't know that something exists, you don't know how to search it. They put together these uh, state agency portals that include a lot of subscription services. So they can be good for identifying information, but you may not find that you have access because you're not an employee in the state of Florida. But navigating through their pages, one of the things they've got are these state agency information libguides, basically. the resource guides that they've put together on their site. And I've scrolled down into the agriculture guide, noting that they're listing various publications and they've got links to the electronic versions of those. I'm noting that the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services Andrew Report, they've actually got it digitally available back to 1890, again, in the Florida Public Documents Collection. So you've got these links to get to the old reports, but you wouldn't necessarily have known to look for them if you didn't know that they existed or what the titles were. Back to the State Library catalog page, and we're going to go to the classic catalog, which is the older version, to look at one resource that I found very useful. The Florida Biography and Citation Index is essentially the, the uh, references from their vertical file at the State Library about Florida. I'm doing a search here for Henry Flagler, and I find an entry for him. I select that entry, and that's great. We've got his birth and death date, but there's not a whole lot of information here. You need to look inside this record, and you don't look in the A look inside. You look click on the catalog record to look inside this. And what they've got is citations to various books and articles to go look for it. You'll then have to go look and see, if you, can you find access to these or interlibrary load them? But this does give you a lot of information that's really useful in terms of looking for information about Florida and particularly about people in Florida. I, people looking for information about Florida don't really care whether it's published publications information that the, li the state library maintains or state records that are unpublished Florida documents that are, from the, that are maintained by the state archives. But they are separate catalogs for looking for that information. The State Archives Catalog is fairly powerful, but I find it to be fairly finicky when you're doing searches by keyword to try and locate material. I've got the results here from searching for John's committee, um, and I needed to put that in quotes because otherwise it looked for John's or committee. I got several hundred results. By putting it as a phrase, by putting it in quotes, I actually limited it to just those entries that had that. The the trick here is you need to click on the little number on the left-hand side. It does say click on the number below for a detailed description. Most people don't see that. 
and don't realize that that number is actually providing you with the detailed information about that. But the Johns Committee was Florida's version of the McCarthy Un-American Activities Committee that took place at the federal level. They were looking for at communists, subversives, in uh, about the second half of it. It really focused exclusively on trying to route out homosexuals in Florida in government agencies and in the university system. On this page, one of the things you'll see is that little uh, folder is also clickable. And that actually will list you several pages of the individual folders that exist in the state archives of transcripts of the interviews all the different types of information that was collected. Going back to the State Archives catalog, the advanced search screen is really useful in terms of helping you understand how to do an effective search. They give you examples for how to fill in the information on these uh, search forums. They give some tips at the bottom in terms of searching. I also found that the browse indexes, so you're searching in a catalog and you don't know that stuff exists, you don't know what terms to put in, and so the computer gives you back what you told it to look for. The browse indexes feature actually allows you to browse by uh, subject terms or uh, by person's names. In fact, if we go back to the previous screen, you notice down at the bottom subject access fields, that actually lists terms that you could use in the catalog uh, for doing searches. So I pull up this entry, I, I'm browsing beginning with Flagler, to look for Henry Flagler again, and actually find six entries that are uh, resources in the collection. The um, and some of these you wouldn't necessarily know to look at without digging into them. The Florida Keys Overseas Railway, in terms of bringing railroads to Florida, that may make sense, and the Key West Railroad Bridge construction photographs, that might make sense. But you have to drill into these uh, files to really discover what's in them. Back to that state publications depository program page. We're going to take a look at the collection policy, the quarterly publication reports, and the list of Florida depository libraries. So this identifies what the state depository program, which has been in, in going since 1967, for distributing uh, publications around the state of Florida that are received by the state library. Uh, if they don't get enough copies to distribute, they only have it at the state library but otherwise they will distribute it to the various libraries. Currently there's about 20 state depository libraries scattered around the state. So this tells you what they do collect and then what they do not collect, things that will not be uh, available in their material. You might find them in the state archives collection. This is the public documents uh, distribution list, basically. Uh, and they've got it digitized back to 1998. And so this will actually list what was distributed to the libraries in that year. Uh, the recent ones uh, give you actually quarterly updates, and the annual accumulations pull that all together. Here's an example from the last quarter of 2016, and you'll find the listings, and they will actually give you a link to the individual publications as to where they exist uh, on the state server. Just going back to the 1998 version, where they broke out monographs in one section and serial publications in the uh, later section, and they interweave the things that were distributed and the things that were not distributed. You notice the fourth one down has the quick number uh, listing, and that's a classification similar to the SUDOC system. It was created by Peggy Walker way back when. She retired 20, almost 20 years ago. And a number of state depositories have adopted that. We use that here at my university. And so we're able to actually locate the documents um, by the agency that issued them. I'm actually going back to the Florida Public Documents, the first print version of the Florida Public Documents distribution. And back then, the first pages were all on white paper and were the things that were being distributed to you. And at the back of the volume, there was usually about the last quarter of the volume was on usually blue paper. And these are the things they didn't get enough copies to send out to the depository libraries. So these are the listings of things that were only available at the state library. So this really shows you the current distribution of the state depository libraries around the state. 
So someone that's looking for a particular publication hopefully will be able to find a copy of it in one of these libraries. Then switching over to searching the Florida Academic Libraries, and you'll see that the 40 uh, academic libraries, public academic libraries in the state, this will identify the 12 state universities, which are the ones that have the uh, outlined lettering, and the 28 uh, state colleges, former community colleges in the state. And so there's a joint catalog that you can search all of those at once. And I would go here to search. I'm going to search for the Florida Visitor Study as an example. And I found six listings. I'm going to open the first listing. It shows me those locations at various, in this case, uh, all but one of these is one of the state universities. You'll notice some of them have that, for example, cod.e1 that FIU does. That's that state uh, depository system that's, that was developed at Florida Atlantic University. And I won't necessarily have all of my collection, Florida documents, the historical documents may not be cataloged, but if I find a listing here, I can use the call number from one of those other universities and locate my copy probably under the same number since we've adopted that common system. If I check availability, you'll see um, FSU has it up through 2011. You'll find most of the libraries stop at 1996 in terms of their coverage. You will see down at the bottom that UCF, we, we have our Florida documents collection through 96, and then at our Rosen campus, we have 2001 through 2015. That's our hospitality school, and so they made a point of picking up the later publications. So if you question, well, why don't we have the later publications in the state library collection, the state documents, well, we look here at the Florida Visitor Study uh, at the state library listing, and they've got 1981 through 2012, so we actually had more recent ones available in the state universities, and they only have the 2012 edition electronically. So what's happening here in terms of why aren't the others available? If I go back to the uh, state university library catalog, what I'll see is a link actually to the earlier version of the Florida Tourist Study. If I see a note here that says that uh, after 1996, these were issued by the Florida Tourism Industry Marketing Corporation. So what happened was in 1996, the Florida Department of Commerce was abolished. And their functions were largely privatized, quasi-government agency. And so they created the Florida Tourism Industry Marketing Corporation, which became Visit Florida fairly quickly, and Enterprise, Enterprise Florida. And the focus of these two organizations initially was really on a marketing side of the house, and they really stopped producing publications with data for researchers and the state of Florida. It was really towards bringing tourists to the uh, state and bringing businesses to the state. Enterprise Florida took quite a while to actually produce data that we had been collected by the Department of Commerce. The visitflorida.org site is the site for their partners. So here's the 2015 Florida Visitor Study, but if you click on this, you have to be logged in as a paying partner of the Visit Florida organization to actually see the, the documents. And here you'll see a number of the other partner tools that are available to their marketing partners, some really useful uh, reports that are not available, generally not available in Florida libraries and in the state depository system because they're being produced by the quasi-governmental privatized Visit Florida Tourism Agency. It's still the official tourism function for Florida but it's no longer a state agency as such. So that's visitflorida.org. Visitflorida.com will is intended for tourists in terms of locating beaches and places to stay and things to do in the state, but there's no data about Florida presented on the commercial site. So you had, on visitflorida.org, you had to actually be a subscribing member or their partners to get access. Visitflorida.com, you don't get that data reported. But they do have a media site, so this visit Florida media blog or mediablog.com. They do have extracted information 
from those research reports so you can find some of the data here on a publicly accessible site. Enterprise Florida has, has a lot more information that's publicly accessible. So initially, they had virtually nothing. When it first happened in 96, you could not get any of the reports that you used to get in, uh, from the Department of Commerce. But they do have a data center that actually provides quite a bit of information these days. So I do recommend that if you're looking for uh, information about businesses in Florida. There's quite a bit of information there. So I want to identify some of the digital collections where you might look for information in Florida. So we already talked a little bit about the Florida Public Documents Collection, which you have to access through the Florida State Library Catalog. There's also the Florida Memory Project that's right out of the, the State Library State Archives. The Palm Project is actually a joint publication or joint uh, project from universities around the state of Florida. University of Florida has quite a few digital collections. And then there's the Florida Electronic Library, Florida on Florida collection. So the Florida Memory Project has really a, a lot of primary source material. They also have a, a classroom center for helping teachers use the primary source material uh, with their students and have lesson guides, uh, lesson plans. The Palm Project, Publication of Archival Library and Museum Materials for the state universities, has a number of specialized digital collections uh, the Aerial photo Photography Collection. The Everglades Digital Library has a lot of federal and state resources as well as some commercial sources. Florida Environments Online has, again, federal and state publications. The Florida Geological Survey. Florida Heritage Collection has a lot of private commercial sources as well as some state publications. And the Florida Historical Legal Documents does provide digitized copies of a lot of the early uh, legal materials from the 1800s. The Florida Heritage Collection, you can search full text of this, but I've, I've tended to find if you don't know what you're looking for, you may get a lot of zero results for things that actually exist there because you weren't quite searching for it correctly. So I have listed here some of the publications that you could actually look for, and I would look for these by title. So they have uh, a number of the digital publications uh, here from various state university digitization projects. Some of these are available on the state library catalog and in some cases may be a longer run of digital copies than what's found here. I know the State Board of Health and Reports, there's a longer run that's available through the state library, but this is one of those places to locate these. The report of the Board of Control, right now only the 1948 through 1952 digital copies are available. My university digitized the, the entire run from 1916 through 1968, but in the transition to a new platform, they are temporarily not visible on the site. They are working to get those established. The Florida and Advancing State was produced in 1928. It gives you a early, from 1907 through 1927, uh, snapshot of the change in Florida as it grew over those years. And there were special censuses done in the state of Florida on the five-year mark, and three of those are actually digitally available in the Palm uh, Project. There's also the Florida History and Heritage Collections at the University of Florida. One of those is the publications of the Florida National Guard. Um, we have those in my collection. Here's one of those that uh, I did a copy for a print copy, but these do exist digitally. Remember I mentioned the Seminole Indian Wars back at the very beginning. Here's one of the pages out of one of those where it's the actual description of the muster roll of the uh, members of that particular unit. And it provides all sorts of interesting genealogical, uh, historically information, uh, interesting information about where they were born and how tall they were and what their color of complexion, eye and hair, what they occupation. I know one of these was a, a cow driver. Um, if they brought a horse with them, what the value of that horse and the horse equipment was. In terms of other places to look for information besides these starting places we identified, the Florida Documents Index is one of those uh, developed by Florida Atlantic. I'm going to go through each of these on the next slides. 
So for our documents index, you can search by keyword. And this is identifying, for example, keyword search for women, identified the specific publications, and identifies which agencies were issuing those publications. If I actually open that first entry, what I'll find is this holdings location at the Florida Atlantic University, the ag.b2b colon d46 slash year, that's that uh, state agency call number system that was developed at Florida Atlantic, and I could use this to locate those volumes. I would also search through the Florida State Library catalog, but this is one other way to get to these, and we're restricting here specifically to those things that were distributed as part, part of the uh, depository program. There's also the Godort project that Daniel Cornwall from Alaska got started, and it's uh, a libguide maintained by ALA's Godort of state agency database listings, uh, state by state. Here's the, the listing for Florida, and we'll provide you with links to specific database resources maintained by state agencies. Another place to look for government information would be the various guides that have been created by depository libraries in the state of Florida. This particular page will provide you with links to a number of those guides. Now, some of these may not focus specifically on state publications, but it's another place to look and see what information they've got. And if you're in the state of Florida looking, you can see a guide for a university near you that might have resources for you. At the University of Florida, the P.K. Young Library is the historical uh, Florida history uh, library special collection, and their holdings are included in that state university, state college um, catalog, but there are parts of their holdings that are not uh, available there. They still maintain a card catalog that has a significant amount of additional information. We actually have, in 1977, they created a book form of that uh, catalog and reproduced the catalog cards, 21 cards per page. Let's look at one of those pages. It's in four oversized volumes, and there are 60, over 60,000 cards from their card catalog that are reproduced in that print source. And I have used it to uh, browse for material that may no longer be uh, showing up or may not have been included in the state catalog for the P.K. Young collection. A couple of other things that I uh, might make use of, particularly looking at the early years, the Serbia's bibliography is a four-volume set. They are very large and very comprehensive. They've tried to make an effort to scour various collections wherever they can go, including out of state, to identify every publication that covers Florida, uh, whether it's a, a official publication from the state of Florida, or if it's commercially produced, or if it's something a congressional document. Also looking at uh, the Florida Handbook by Alan Morris, and dissertations and theses as a search tool, and newspapers. So I look at this Bibliar of Florida, they've actually got uh, it's arranged year by year. So I'm looking right now at the 1909 year, and I moved into it to the Florida pages where they start a new section called Florida Official Publications, and they group them. So normally they're arranged by the author of the publication. All of the Florida Official Publications are grouped alphabetically by the author under Florida. They also have listings for the U.S. Congressional Publications, the, the Congress Publications. The Florida Handbook was produced by, commercially produced by Alan Morris, uh, started in 1947 and produced through 2012. And although it's a commercial publication, it's probably one of the best ways to look at uh, the structure of Florida government as it changes over time and give you a clue as to, oh, that agency is now called this in 1955. The Florida Handbook is available digitally in the uh, Palm Collection, so you can search for the Florida Handbook by title and find the digital copies of these. Even though it was commercially produced, it has been digitized there. 
And the problem with these is they were produced every two years, and they are different from year to year, extremely different in some cases. And what I found uh, is, you know, like the 1950s, they didn't just have a title page or a uh, table of contents. They just launched right in. But you find all sorts of really interesting information in these. He would change it up every two years. So you'll find pictures that lasted for several years, and then they disappear, never to reappear. The early volumes do have an index of the uh, illustrations. And starting on page, there's about 40 pages of boards and commissions pages that break out. And they provide quite a bit of detail about the history of these organizations including the uh, whoever was in charge, they give a little biographical sketch of those particular individuals. I mentioned dissertations of search, and I would be searching through probably our university's uh, indexes, commercial indexes of dissertations. But I want to point out here is a bibliography that was produced, I think, back in 1977 as well. And it tried to pull together all the doctoral dissertations, over a 1,000 doctoral dissertations that dealt with Florida and arrange them by subject area. So it is something that does exist for browsing. A lot of times, uh, a dissertation or a thesis, the graduate student will have researched into some of these hard-to-find locations of uh, materials, of publications and state records, and may give you a clue as to, oh, that's where you'll find that particular information. So dissertation can be a real good clue for how to start a research process. I also use newspapers a lot. I would typically go into our commercial subscriptions uh, for current newspapers, but there are several other projects. The Florida Digital Newspaper Library from the University of Florida has digitized quite a lot of the early newspapers. There's also the Google Newspaper Archive that does have a, several newspapers from around the state of Florida uh, that do go fairly current, up through 2008. I would generally use the St. Pete Times in uh, this particular listing. Uh, but they do have the Daytona, Pe Daytona Beach paper, Sarasota paper. Um, also, the Chronic America site, they've got some uh, issues, mostly from that Florida Digital Newspaper Library, but another site that you can get to these things. The Florida Digital Newspaper Library, again, a little bit finicky in terms of searching, but you can search the full text of these. I pulled up here an article from the uh, a weekly newspaper from the state of Florida. They are digitizing current weekly newspapers from around the state quite a bit. Here's the Lake City Reporter. And here's how we'd use this as a fighting tool. Here's talking about a particular project, school district project, that's being coordinated through the Squatty River Water Management District. So I know what agency is doing this. They've been doing it for the past seven years. I now have names of this article of specific individuals at that agency. So if I was trying to find more information about this project and its history and resources for it, I might go to that agency directly. I'm going back here to uh, 2000, or 1907. I've actually got four different uh, aspects of state government covered in this particular issue of the paper. The one that's cut off on the left is actually Governor Broward had proposed that they drain the Everglades, and a number of the papers had been sort of poking fun at him for this, and he tried to get the state legislature to enact uh, restrictions on the press uh, because he didn't like how he was being covered. Uh, here we are 110 years later, and sounds like some of what's going on now. The middle article is talking about uh, uniform adoption of uniform textbooks uh, in Florida and some of the issues with that. But what I actually want to focus on is the last one where uh, it's talking about a particular report from the commission uh, to inspect the state insane asylums, and it tells me that the report was actually included in the Senate journal. I'm looking at April 3rd as a date, and I go to the Florida Senate website, their archive site, and pull up the April 3rd journal of the Senate, and I find here's the beginning of that eight-page report. The entire text of that report is actually included in the journal of the Senate, but I would never go to look for that if I hadn't had that article telling me Here's where that report exists. Looking at title of the presentation, Government of the Sunshine State, looking at sunshine laws in terms of open records laws, public records, open meetings, here's some of the resources that I will use quite often. The uh, Government of the Sunshine Man Manual is actually made available through the Attorney General's Office, and it's jointly produced by the Attorney General's Office for the State of Florida and by the First Amendment Foundation. The 
uh, Office of Open Government site maintained by the Florida governor has opened and closed over time, but it's currently available and does provide some information. Uh, Breckner Center at the University of Florida School of Journalism has quite a bit of information in terms of looking for open government resources. They are in the middle of changing to a new website, and at the moment, the only material that has actually migrated to the new site is the attorney's fees database, but I uh, communicated with them last week, and they are in the process of migrating these other resources over to the new website. First Amendment Foundation produced this Florida Public Records Handbook back in 1999, so it's quite old. It is out of print, but if you can get your hands on it, it's really, really useful for figuring out how to look for specific type of information in Florida. The entries on it talk about where to look, why it's useful. It provides tips and uh, tricks in terms of how to look at the information, how to locate it. It also identifies what the key pieces of information that are available in these public records. As you can see, in terms of the listings of the different types of reports that are made available, uh, that are described here in terms of locating information around the state. So I just will pull the table of contents here to give you a, a feel for what might be out there and how to go about looking for it. Again, this is out of print, but if you get a hands on a copy, it is really useful. In terms of government accountability, the uh, OPAGA office out of the state legislature provides some really good reports. The Auditor General site, again, provides some great uh, resources in terms of finances and performance audits of state agencies and local government agencies, and then the Transparency Florida site. The, you can look by agency or by topic. If I click on the Consumer Protection and Insurance link here, I actually find that there are multiple agencies in the state of Florida that may have specific programs that I might be looking for information, detailed information about those programs. At the Auditor General site, I can look by uh, audit types. So if I'm looking for performance audits, operational performance audits, I can restrict to that. I can look by if the audited, so I can look at just state agencies or look at uh, smaller organizations within the state. The Transparency Florida site gives you a lot of different types of uh, resources um, in terms of uh, includes, for example, the salaries of state employees, including state universities, all public record. In terms of statistical sources, uh, I will often use uh, Bieber, the Bureau of Economic and Business Research at the state of Florida, uh, I'm sorry, University of Florida. The Florida Statistical Abstract that they produce is really useful, similar to how you might use the Statistical Abstract of the U.S. in terms of finding a table there and then looking at the footnotes to see which agency, which publication provides more information. Unfortunately, uh, I just saw recently that the uh, their website, as of the middle of December, they are not getting the funding to continue to provide uh, some of the data they've been providing on their website free, so there's going to be charges to access their information after the middle of December. The state legislature maintains the Office of Economic and Demographic Research, which has some great resources uh, in terms of statistical data, also the uh, Florida charts from the Florida Department of Health. So here's just a quick page from the Florida Statistical Abstract. Uh, you can see very similar to the Statistical Abstract of the U.S. The uh, Economic and Demographic Research Office at the state legislature has a lot of really specific uh, statistical data sources bring you very current. Here's one of those, the Local Government Financial Information Handbook, which actually will give you county by county uh, tax distributions for all the special taxes that are in effect around the state. Mobile Home License Tax tells you which, how much each county gets for their share of that revenue. Florida Health Charts site, I'm looking at the behavior risk factor data, and you can actually select specific categories of uh, health data, and then get county by county listings and some nice graphs from that. If I look at statutes, getting back to our dates, rush through these last ones, 
1927 is generally the compiled journal laws that I would go to most, but there are digital copies of some of those earlier versions. 1941 is when you actually start seeing Florida statutes continuously produced, and you'll see them in odd-numbered years up through 1969 because the state legislature did not meet. They only met in odd-numbered years, so you only got new statutes every odd year. We had a new uh, state constitution in 1968 that reconfigured a lot of things in the state. It's a major uh, watershed point in the state of Florida. And the state statutes started to be reducing every year. But until 1998, you had an odd-numbered full statutes, multi-volume, and a single-volume supplement for just the changes of the uh, even-numbered years. Point out something in the Florida statutes index, looking in alphabetically after sheriff and shopping carts. There's an entry for short titles has over 700 entries. If you're looking for something like Baker Act or the State Lemon Law, which is actually the Motor Vehicle Warranty Enforcement Act, I would probably look online. But this will give you those other entries. The Index to Special Local Laws actually gives you those details of the laws that establish specific cities. I make note of the Reedy Creek Improvement District Law, which was established in 1967. It's actually the 1,965th law that was passed that year, and it established Walt Disney World, but you have to know that it's Reedy Creek Improvement District actually located there. State legislature meets essentially in the spring. It used to meet every other year. Now it meets for a 60-day session starting in March. It meets on the first Tuesday after the first Monday because it used to meet in April, and they didn't want to start the legislative session on April Fool's Day. Online Sunshine is a great website for the state of Florida in terms of locating information. One of the notes in terms of looking for bills as of 1990, even number bills are Senate bills, odd number bills are House bills. So for example, if you look in 2017, you will find that the uh, bills only go up even number through 1026. So there is no even number bill 3692 because odd number bills are House bills. And there's a lot more House bills introduced. Here's that online Sunshine site. State of Florida restructured completely, so the statutes in the state of Florida, changed from chapter 200 to chapter 1000, and there is no tracking back to those. Also, the state organization of higher education governing, uh, they did away with it in 2001 and got reestablished through a, a political initiative by Senator Graham to reestablish the Board of Governors, which will have a gap there. And so there will be, here's looking at the 2016 Florida statutes for school districts, and it looks like there's only, it goes back to 2002, you actually have to look at the 2001 Florida statute to see the earlier history of that same language. Interesting thing in the state of Florida, we're just getting interesting things really quickly here. The state, Secretary of State reports include things like the automobiles that were registered in the state. Here's rewards that were offered in the state. Lots of interesting things in these old volumes. The Florida Memory Collection actually has those auto registrations digitized in it. Special tax districts uh, make up a huge part of the state. You can actually look at all of these and find listings for them on the, uh, the special districts list site. Department of Agriculture maintains the charity list, and you can actually find the 990 forms available for specific charities, but you have to sort of know which one you're looking for. State Transportation does a uh, interesting, you can actually see the, the traffic cameras across the highway, see what accidents are, uh, construction projects, that sort of thing. Finding up, I would go to the Ask a Librarian service for the state of Florida, which is the state library actually maintains a lot of the responsing, response to that, but there are a lot of other libraries participating and responding. If you're a librarian in the state of Florida, you can contact other depository librarians for help. There are two lists that are maintained out of the state library and at the University of Florida. You need to contact them about how do I get on that distribution. State library has done some webinars. Uh, for state agencies, but I've got links here for some of those that give you some links. And here is the follow-up information for contacting me and for a link to that research guide where I will be putting all of the listings for links to all of the resources on there. I, and that concludes the webinar. Back to you, Linda. Um, thank you very much.